Fiscal 280th live critique stream. Yay. Hello and welcome. Uh, so now uh, everyone in the stream has heard us, but now everyone in the recording can hear us too. Hello. Uh, it's me, the raccoon, who whose computer messed up last time. Um, I recorded like a, 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 a sorry about what happened a end video that I was trying. It's just like a minute long that I was trying to clip on. Um, wherein I had my little pony here dance about the screen onto the, <laughs> onto the top of my raccoon. Um, uh, but I, I couldn't get it to edit on. YouTube wouldn't let me do it. And then uh, Premiere Pro wouldn't let me compile the video because it's going to take like five hours and then it just failed so ugh. i'm sorry that the video just ends <laughs> the last stream but we're here we're, we're, here we're alive another week done. yes we're alive uh because all of us are alive because we don't have the zombie today <gasps> he's on okay. vacation they're, they're on paid leave uh <laughs> we freed freed him for we paid him with vacation. hugs and brains <laughs> Quite content. Which may be why I have a mild headache. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Yes. Well, some uh, take the brain on. Yeah. <laughs> so, here with me, we have the wonderful lioness group mum, Ali Glow. Hoi hoi. And we have the super amazing, lovely, and charming Pixie Nup. Ah. Uh. <laughs> that was the sound. <laughs> CPC is still. Uh, in, on her adventures, uh, her unpacking adventures, getting lost in boxes with her, her goat boyfriend. So uh, We will see her again at some point, maybe. But at the moment, she's still trying to figure out her sleep schedule and like work schedule and all that stuff because you know the stream's pretty late for us. Uh, so we'll, we'll see when she returns. Dang time zones. So we're down to three of us. But it's okay. We can survive. We're going to hand it over to uh, the next generation. Just yeah. like how Pony Gen 4 ends, so must we. <laughs> Vex Tofu, uh, looking at you. So we have some from the chat here today. My my thing was automatically zoomed into the top left, but actually we're going down to the bottom right, I think, aren't we? Unless I'm mistaken? Yeah, yeah. we'll do mm -hmm. Tofu. We'll first do first Tofu. First yeah. I have to scroll my own Aggie and the streams separately, because I have the power to have them be separate. There we go. Hooray! So, what do we have here? We do have, have a lovely questions, art. Trophies? We they they did. They left some questions. Um, the questions are: How to make the fowl look more like a fowl and scared, and the legs on the character? <laughs> Thank you for passing it. Uh, we did. We put it. We put it in there. You made it in time. You did it. Um, so making making the kids the fowl. The, the full, full, wow. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was confused as to whether you were like making a spelling. <laughs> I thought they were Pegasus I and you were making a joke, but. No, no. <laughs> I thought I made a typo and I was like, wait, what? I just want to keep I thought I had feet. forgotten how Make spelling sure you're works. Paying attention, you know? <laughs> now I know you're all awake and paying attention. You passed the I, test. I, I either it's thought really. I forgot how spelling worked, or Ali Claw was making a joke, or both. <laughs> both. Always both. Also, Turns the, out we the all forgot how spelling about, works. The, the, the stream is about 20 minutes behind, so we, we can take screenshots for the people who are actually here <laughs> in the call. Uh, yes. So, can do that. The, the main the main thing with, with the foal is the foal's head should be somewhere along the same lines as the same size as the adult pony's head. It's, it's, right now, the foal's head is like 100 billion times smaller, and that's, that's fine, but it, it's, it's kind of, when, when you look at like normal people, like humans and stuff like that, it's like, you know, adults are seven heads high, kids are five and a half heads high, toddlers are three heads high, and all that sort of stuff. It's a similar kind of a thing for ponies, and it, it works because the head stays roughly sort of the same size, or like a similar kind of a size. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. the main pony's head is like about that size. And then, you know, the false head would be something roughly the same size. Okay. So... Around about. Okay, interesting. Because mm. 
I, I get that in the show they, they, they had it really out of sight, but I want to go for a more um, realistic style. So that's why I make the uh, the thought a bit smaller. Originally, when I first drew the the line work, it was as big as the um as big as the, uh, the ponies. But that just mm. looks a bit weird. Cause see, I don't know. But maybe it's because I'm I'm not doing it right. You know, but you know, mm. maybe. Yeah, baby, baby, anything's usually just it's weird proportions because the skull and the the way the bones are, they're pretty mm. set. They'll grow, of course, um, to build to the full frame, but they still have the generic proportions that they would be as adults, kind of starting mm. in the way the bones, like the proportion wise. So they'll mm. grow with all the bones will grow together. So you still get like the adult proportions, but you get like weird shrinkages. And like if you look at baby horses, they have those really, really skinny legs, but they still have like big barrelly chests kind of going on. So it's a mm. matter of like thinking of the proportions, but kid size. I Lots see, I see. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how heads work, but yeah, some. Kind of, sort of, roughly. I don't know. And feel free to like leave the hooves a little bit lighter, a little bit like a little bit thicker. Oh, what? Just, just like the Sorry. front hooves and all that sort of stuff. Like leave them a little bit thicker. Ah, okay. Because if, if if you look between the the adult ponies' hooves and their hooves, it's like it's almost like you've just like taken the adult pony and then like literally shrunken them down. Whereas leaving the hooves a little bit thicker than they are originally, than they are in the, the original picture, will sort of help reinforce those sort of like weird portions that work for like bowls and stuff. Mm. Let me get a picture. Oh. My mic is really muffled. Apparently. Oh yeah, it is a bit. Yeah. Is, is this is this a bit normal? Uh, it sounds the same. Okay. Fair enough. Because this is because this is a very um kind of like challenging angle. So first of all, the head is raised by that. You know, it's just a bit of a weird mm-hmm. angle, and also you gotta make sure there's a fold. Make sure the expression is there. It's kind of weird for me to try it out, but I think that it's probably maybe one thing I can do, I can draw this in a flat um, angle. I can, you know, tune it up a bit. Not, I don't know if that would work. Just this. Well, um, rotate it up. Would that work? I have a thought. I have a thought. What's more important that the the young pony is looking at the big scary creature or that the pony's scared because usually when a pony's so scared they try to hide themselves so like maybe they could be facing away but you could be having the fear of them like holding the hoof over their head trying to protect themselves or they could be sort of like any way they bent can down like with their head buried in the hooves You're, like shriveling mm. in fear kind of yeah. i think mm. uh, that microphone should be a little bit better yeah there we go Oh, oh yeah, really? it was it was it was picking up my my webcam microphone, which is is oh, yeah, tossed into a corner. Oh no! <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's just you know, webcam mic is not my mic. But yeah, yeah. yeah Topher they... and I had a bit of a chat about this picture yesterday, last night, about compositiony sort of all that stuff. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to think about um, where and where to put the details and make those make those decision um, logical um, before you you know just go in so switch and add all the details everywhere and uh, <laughs> but just and then just make the image you know it looks nice when you zoom in but when you zoom out the overall picture when they, they don't kind of work together because they have too much stuff going on mm-hmm. you're gonna make those decisions where to leave the details and where to leave places empty so you can have more of a thing, of a mood going on. I don't know. Something that, yeah, still working on. Well, yeah. I guess. Okay. It's, to be honest, something you're always going to be working on. But, uh, yeah. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things where it's like, hey, this is like one of the foundational things of art and you'll always be practicing it. And there'll always be times where it's like, ah, this isn't as good right now as it could be. So, you know, let me let me dump a, a you know, a couple of days into practicing this sort of stuff. Yeah, of course. I think um yeah, a couple 
couple hundred drawings after. No, it's gonna be fine. Just to do like you know, if I work on this, I think I'll just do what they say in the protocol. Just like do um like a hundred or something thumbnails. Just you know, not that's the complicated stuff. But just try out all the ideas you see either in nature or you're looking at master paintings. So, you know, so do a hundred you know. billion drawings, and then you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> work on it. Hey. Oh, that's a Pokemon. I thought that that was a. That and was the other thing I have uh, is p- picture is the um the leg, the hind leg of the of the um the male pony the stallion. Mm. I think I just woke up. Um, the, <laughs> do you see the back leg between the um between the two forelegs? That one looks. I don't know. Like I had the line work and everything there, but I just don't feel like it looks. It looks. It looks good. I don't know what's going on there. The legs. Mm. I feel like, so I feel like the one thing that I'm not sure if it's just the way the line works, line work is reading to my brain. It feels like you have a very like flat and squat chest. Like it's very wide. Mm. Um, Even if the shoulder, like the horse's shoulders don't pop out this much, even on both angles, they'd still be a little more attached to the main barrel of the chest because the neck feels very, you know what? That's what it is. There's a tangent here. With the rifle, that makes the neck feel like it's so thick. Like, I'm reading this is your neck right now. Mm, and that's so that's very good. thick compared to the rest of the body. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with the leg, but... And then... But that reads, for me, to see this as the huge body. And then back here is the, the stomach. Something isn't... Like, it's almost as if this is the wrong angle like you need this more tucked behind so this one can be more tucked behind just, like just if i were can to can tofu see the aggie i can't actually because i don't see anything happening i see it's loading and then nothing's happening on the on the stream i can see the stream fine but yeah my, uh, my it's, it's, it's like the, the, the stream is about 100 million years old oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's behind it's it, I don't know. Maybe it's like different for each person because I see it like that's, pretty that's, up that's, to that's, that's probably it's probably to be honest Australian internet because uh, I can like I've been looking at it thinking ah oh, it's actually like not too far behind today. So like, maybe it's different for yeah. different people depending on where they are in the world. I don't know. I I, I uh, no, I see. no on Aggie no, 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 I can see on Aggie. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I invited Tofu to the Aggie to take a look. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're on. She, she, yeah, she she was talking about the, um, the tangent with this uh, rifle here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. neck feels super duper thick. I yeah, I kind of feel like that as well. I already made it a bit shorter actually. Originally was even longer, but I made it a bit shorter already. But, yeah. I mean, it's not so uh, much the shortness, but how thick it is. Like it's a very very thick neck, yeah, especially compared you're right, you're right. to the body circle here. Then this becomes even wider. And then back yeah. here it feels too very thin. You can yeah, probably okay. for for like this strap that's holding holding the rifle, probably just like, you know, make it like a little bit curved or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it like comes comes out like this instead. Right. So, okay. so there isn't that like tangent with the rest of the neck. Mm-hmm. Uh I was I was gonna say as well, if you look at kind of the 3D layout of everything on the ground it's like this mm-hmm. hoop's planted here this hoop's here this hoop's here tracing this one down it's probably like landing somewhere like here or something like that mm-hmm. you could probably pull that a little bit further back that way so it's like mm-hmm. here ish and then right. this leg i think i think this leg just needs to be like pulled out a little bit further so it like lands here so that it is providing mm. you know balance Kind of a thing. I see. I see. Yep. Okay. So I think. I think. I think. Right now, I, I'm inclined to be like, okay, this pony's going to tip over that way. Hmm. Because there's a lot of like stuff here, and there's also like a lot of weight over this side. Hmm. I see. I see. Okay. Like this is how I would push the pose to have it a bit more. Like if I were to draw a box over this. Oh. To make the whole body feel a bit more like this kind of a box, because mm-hmm. right now it feels like you're trying to force the body out. Like, uh... yeah, be watching. I think you're enjoying that. It's pretty interesting that you start with shapes, big shapes, and then you beat uh, beat this body up. Which is, you know, which is, which yeah. is really really interesting. Because I usually I just use the guidelines. Do you, would you mind keeping the the lines in there? 
Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, keep, just keep that in there because I want to remember that because I want to try that out when next time when I have problems with it. Because I always I just use lines, uh, the guidelines. I feel like sometimes when I just use the guidelines, it gets a bit um, confusing and stuff. I just don't quite get it. I think with the shapes behind, I can actually see what's going on. It makes a lot more sense mm-hmm. to me. You know, doing, I, yeah. I personally am not the hugest fan of the guidelines only because it makes me forget about... Um, like form and thickness i i don't get the 3d yeah yeah i don't think about the 3d because like especially for like this back one this the hoof i tried to recreate that one um mm-hmm. i need to know how it connects to the thigh like and also uh, something that helps me is remembering the butt cheek the, the thigh is going to go into the butt cheek it's part of that so if you ever like forget the center line of the butt it's a great way to align those legs yeah you're right. That that's I think that's that's why I messed up. I just used guidelines. I forgot the thickness and the three D form. The the thing. I just kind of like going with that and another line. That's whoosh whoosh. And it worked out. There's, yeah, there's so many different ways. This is just the way it works for me. I know artists, other artists use the lines, and it works great for them because they just need that like uh, I guess a gesture like the the line of action mm-hmm. gestures. But for me, shapes shapes all the way down. Mm. I think I'm other 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 they're going for um different style where like you can. You know, twist the character a lot more to get the expression and the gesture out, or they just have really good knowledge of the 3D um, shape of the pony. They don't need as much, uh, you know, shapes and stuff there to to guide them. They can just like whoosh, whoosh and straight straight out of their head. You know, they can just do that. Straight yeah, away. I think I think I think Ali's like drawn like a hundred million trillion different poses. And so oh yeah, so sure. doing doing this is just like oh, okay. Let, let me let me look back in my mind. Not everything works out though. Not everything works out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And and messy. Let yourself be messy, because I was I was very much until I had to beat it. I had to beat it out of me to like not do like okay. I have to have the perfect sketch clean line art before I figure out everything, and I'd you know draw all the bits before I even like figured out how they'd all attach to each other. So I'd end up with like I don't know monstrosities like that. Mm-hmm. But learning to just yeah, like that's... this is your first layer. You can make it as messy as you want as long as it's readable to you. It doesn't have to be readable to anyone else. Mm. I see. You make it messy. Yeah, I I, I you get saw, your point. You I, in, uh, hmm? I, was, I was I was just gonna say you saw that in like when when Tofu when when we were chatting yesterday you saw like me doing like this as like my first layer and it was like oh, okay that's unreadable but I'm like yeah that's a pose that's you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. It really Nobody helps sometimes to, to 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 just like shove on some expressive thing that you can use as an action line. Mm. Hmm. I see. I see. I think. I think we should honestly probably move on by by now. Just just because we have a lot of a lot of damn pictures to make. Yeah. We've given you a lot, a lot to lot think about. Pictures. So. <laughs> yeah. It's good work though, as always. Happy to see you experimenting with bigger yes. pieces and like full bodies and stuff. I drew a Pokemon thank you, up thank here. You. I drew a little rope. Mm. <laughs> oh. Um. Which, do we have any others that are here um, with us today? I I do not. Wait, let me triple check. If you're oh. in the chat and you see your art on here, speak up. I'm just going through all the pictures we have. I'll zoom out so someone can see. <laughs> Though it, may, it will be like another 15 to 20 seconds. <laughs> I'm not seeing uh, anybody. Nope, I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, Duke. We'll go to the top left then. To the top left. And Where I'll we started the stream. Let's go mm, ponies. Cute, cute ponies. There we go. Perfect. All right. So this is by user Yu Momo Chan, and this is art fight attack on uh, Tuknit. That's by them. They have no questions. Just it's an art fight attack. Ooh, art fight. Hell yeah, art fight. If you only do an art fight, you should do art fight. It's super fun. Definitely. Definitely do that. This is this is an adorable. Like I actually, uh, I I feel like I recognize this character, but, it's, but I think it's because I. Did an art fight with a character that had sort of pastel rainbow mane last time. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Gotta love a good gradient pastel. Yes. 
Yeah, this this one looks cute. Do, do we have any comments or questions? Nope, just that it's an art plate. Uh, well, so it's also cute. Yeah. Um, only thing that really sticks out to me so far is the, the way that she's sitting on the donut because she doesn't really feel that she's placed. Like, if we're, we're sort of thinking about, like, the sort of top layer of the donut sort of going like this. This is, this is sort of the, the shape we're looking at. Uh, roughly. And the way she's sitting is kind of just, like, on one side. Uh, either she's she should kind of need to be placed... Sort of like over the top of one side like this mm. or have one her back leg propped up also or alternatively oops that's not what i meant to do have the back leg just peering into the donut yeah to make it look like it's uh it's sort of uh got some uh, the, the way the pose looks to me that this here is what makes sense, and what we were seeing was just sort of like a clipping error, where the the leg was sort of showing through the donut, even though it shouldn't. It should be going into the middle with the way it's posed. So either it should stay in the middle, or it should go off to like the. It should sort of poke out a little bit, or Under that. be or be fully lifted up. But you may need to move her for that to happen. I think. Yeah. Or it could just be sort of like lifting it into the air and not really actually placed on anything. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So it's a it's a small thing, but an important thing. Yeah. This here, what you can do because it's like side on, you can sort of pull this forward a bit and have it do something along those lines. So like this is sort of the front part of the ear, and over here is kind of just like the. Uh, Get transitioning into like the backside of the ear and all that sort of stuff, and that that might be interesting. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, just a quick like, uh, since it's side view, mm. just gotta get those glasses a little more side view. Look at look at um something called for shortening, and I'm sure that you've heard this term, or we may even know it. But it's basically like when 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 we're looking like straight on at something, you know, it can be like, you know, fully, you can show every part of it and that sort of stuff. But like as you transition, as you like turn it around, it's like you need to hide more and more of it and distort it more and more in order to like get it looking how it should look. Mm -hmm. And that's foreshortening. And things with the glasses, like you can distort those a lot more to, to hide a lot more of the stuff. You can do that with the, you could do that with the bow probably. Even, even to be honest, the eye, you could, if you wanted to, you could probably like have it do something along these lines so that it's like more facing the front kind of thing yeah. if you wanted to. But definitely, definitely just like look at foreshortening in general because it's, it's a good way to sort of, uh, represent the the form of your picture in more like extreme angles and if you want to if you want really easy practice if you can find yourself a book or like an oblong oblong box or something and your first test is to draw it like from front on and then take that book and put it at an angle in front of you so you only see it partly and then you try to draw it so it'll look more like i don't know like they're crashing into each other, but you see how it changes from like one shape to the other because of its rotation, and that's something really simple you can do to practice. It can be a book, any kind of thing, you know, any shape, any simple shape. You'll see how it changes as you twist it in front of you, and how less is revealed. Hmm. It's like you know this this one. You see all of the different sides. This one, you see this side very very front on. But this side, the top top side, is very foreshortened. It's very very distorted, very hidden, and it, it feels wrong. But it it can make your stuff look more uh, more interesting and accurate. Mm -hmm. In in general, like this this is a really good picture. It's 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 well drawn. 
It's you've got uh, lovely colors on it, all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. It's just like little neck peeky stuff, like you know, this ear shape could be a little bit different. This should, yeah, this could be like a little bit more foreshortened to be front on. I think this this section here, how like the belly connects to this thigh, could be interesting. It's it's a it's a challenging sort of like an area because you've got like a lot of different stuff to like keep in mind. Especially depending on sort of the body shape of your pony and stuff like that. But you could probably make a little bit more space in there. Cut back into that a little bit. Maybe something like that. Could work. Yeah. I always I, I always tend to um cut off the, the butt like somewhere like there. A little bit that that tends to work for me, but you know that's that's all personal preference and all that sort of thing. But yeah, it's good horse. At the end of the day, I lo- I love the hair, love the colors, I love the little overlaps, like little parts like this where hair sticks out. I love when people do that. Mm. I I love I love this like entire shape of the of the hair. Yeah. It's so good. It's so cool and readable. I like it. Sorry, I dropped away. I'm back. It's all good. good. I think we're finished here and we can move on to the next one. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Super good horse. Yes. Let's go over to the right one. I can figure out how to move. There we go. Ooh. Iris Blue draws art. That is correct. Um, that is the that is the title and the only words they left us. Rocking horse. Um, it it does <laughs> say twenty eighteen. Oh, oh, is this an old oh. picture then. Well, Iris, um, I I feel like I've seen your artwork around here before. Um, the only thing I'll say is, please try to submit newer art. Critique is really for um stuff you're currently working on, and it's since it's 2021 now. Odds are you've changed yeah. a whole bunch since 2018. So in the future, um, we'll we'll critique this one a little bit today. But in the future, please please submit more recent art, and if you have questions, because. It, critique is a discussion, and we love to hear from the artists and seeing what they're struggling with or what they need help with. So mm-hmm. that would be mm-hmm. fantastic. Yes. Yeah, All I, of I'm what we do. We have seen them draw at anything at, uh, in a time frame after t- after 2018. Like yeah. I know some people are like, oh, I haven't drawn for three years, so I'm just picking it up again. You know. Yeah. Or four years in this case. Yeah. But uh, if, if you if you, if you don't ask there. questions. We need to just assume what you want to do with art and how you want to take art. That is not a good color, light blue on light blue horse. Yeah, right. definitely. I was just looking at their profile, and I've seen they have stuff posted for twenty twenty. So, yeah, okay. for sure. Keep keep it keep it with the fresh art, so we can know and understand. Yeah, because so. this isn't really indicative of what you can do as an artist, so. <laughs> or of the things that you're struggling with right now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very well said. So we'll just keep this line of critique short. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of the stuff we're, we're doing might be stuff that you've already changed about your art style, but we're just sort of thickening the hooves, uh, sort of placing the anatomy a little bit more smoothly over here. Got some, some nice raised booper snoot going on over there. Ignore ignore my wing. My wing is bad. I'm bad at wings. But <laughs> the, the same... A similar sort of critique that applies to the last picture could also do with this one in terms of the eye and that sort of stuff in terms of like foreshortening it and making it a little bit more distorted so it's like more front facing. And the if if you go from like the center of the head roughly out this way, you've got a bit more of like a accurate uh Angle for the for the horn to be up, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, a really easy fix or a really easy like tip with ears is to uh, try to make one side straight and the other side curved. Especially when you're like going at it from this kind of an angle, it's it's a it's a small thing, but it's something that can like help you get like more distinctive ear shapes. 
And if not mm-hmm. exactly straight, just uh, tightening up the angle is, is what Pixie is saying, because it sort of helps create that mm. three-dimensional curve. Because it's, cur- it's a curvy thing, not a, not a round lemon. Uh, so it helps to sort of define that shape a bit more. And in I honor bet. of ZomZom, don't forget that second ear. Yeah. They got two of them. <laughs> and so rotating the ears at different angles is always nice to have that, that back yeah. one facing further away. It's... And the, the second hoofers. Yeah. Back even the even if they're side by side perfectly, yeah. you're still going to see something. You need those, um, yeah. those back leggies. Yep. I'm like, you, you can see here. And going down to here, I've I've just just changed it just a little bit, but it's it's enough to sort of make the picture look more interesting, kind of sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Not distracting me during the stream, sending me TikTok messages. Gosh, <laughs> how rude! But <laughs> super good horse, I love it. Yeah. Let us move. If uh, oh. if your pic- next picture is not from twenty eighteen, uh, put the current year on it so that we know it's a uh, current year drawing. Yeah. Oh, uh, so are you ready to move on? Yep. Cool. Zoom out a bit. Ooh. There's lots, uh, lots of lovely things going on here. I think, Can't I think really this is one of those head scratcher. Zoom. I think, I think this is one of those head scratcher things that you like. <laughs> Put over your head. Oh, oh, those yeah. Are the best. <laughs> oh, those are so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just having a good scroll around all the art, so we can have a good look at it on the stream. It, <laughs> so I this is by uh, Lazy Cat and Trash. I love that name. Um, my right. first MLP OC Star Striker. She's two thirds Pegasus and one third Kieran. Ooh. Tell you what, the, it looks like it's yeah. the same drawing flip, so I could zoom into like one of the full body ones, so we can get like a bigger view on the stream. Yeah, go for the wing wingy one. Ah, I didn't even notice that yeah. one didn't have the wings. Okay, does she have a wing on one side, or like is it one just showing the body without the wings attached? I think I think the body without the wings. I think I think it's more of a uh, yeah. Like, here's shape. what it looks like to see the my um. <laughs> My suggestion for that is, even if you're showing a side with no wing, just because you don't have it illustrated that there's no wing on the back side here, so someone could interpret that as only a one wing horse. Yeah. So if there really or that is they another can sometimes wing, have wings and sometimes not have wings. Yeah, just something to um, note that, or if there's a second wing, make sure you get it over here. And if there isn't, Tofu, I believe, drew this nice little X. You just yeah, need that's, something that's, as simple as that's that. That's often what I see. Yeah. You can also just <laughs> do a little, like, there is a wing Oh, yeah, like, somewhere. look that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, it's not, obviously not part of the design, but you can still see through it, so it's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the little X where there's, like, a, a tail or something cut off in, like, an anthro. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Like, hey, there's stuff here. Or it might be, like, I see sometimes, like, uh, bipedal characters on, in, like, a side view will have, like, the arms sort of bisected. The uh, the beak has given me a lot of. Oh, yeah. um... I zoomed in on the one without the wings, so we were drawing that stuff over the, oh. <laughs> over the one without the, the wings, the, and uh, we don't the, see the, it. The, the, the beak has given me a lot of uh, hippogriff vibes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is cool. What do they say they were again? Part Kieran, part, uh, part Pegasus. Ah, I see. The Kieran Pegasus. Yeah, they, they, they definitely have more of a beak than a snout, it looks like. This it is meant mm-hmm. to be a snout, but the way it curves down does give super typical vibes. Yeah, I'd say if you were going for Kieran, I'd try to... Um, this is subjective, of course. I'd try to work in their scales or something. Yeah, or the scales like, uh, and the horn, maybe. Yeah, scales, the horn, the... the um, what are they called when the, the hoof is split in half? Cloven hooves, cloven hooves. Yeah, yeah. Cloven hooves. I... I, I'm wondering if, like, I was thinking about, like, the horn, and, like, if you wanted them to be more Pegasus and not have the horn, so they don't have sort of, like, Alicorn vibes going on, um, then you can, I was like, I wonder if there's, like, more Kieran thing where you could do the wings, and I was like, ah, oh, there's probably some cool way you could interpret the wings to be different, uh, for mm-hmm. the Kieran. You could, like, look up into, like, myth- mytholo- yeah, mythology, 
and and, and sort of carry in mythology and see if there's any like interpretation or inspiration you can get. That'd be something yeah, be interesting fun. to experiment with. I do really like the Kieran tail. I do yeah. like that. That's that's so, always cute. Yeah. It's so big that it is clipping through the floor. Um, so it would be, oh, no. that's fun. <laughs> it'd be more like it'd be more like smushed against the ground as it is, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, smooch, ponytails smooch get dusty fun. sometimes, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see by my awful, awfully drawn hoof. Oh, I love that. But I love that. I, 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 I think I think I think honestly, just like having having one here and then having one like a little bit extended might be fun. Because it's hmm. it's like you know it, 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 it looks like this is like a, yeah it looks like this is like a character sheety kind of a thing but that doesn't mean you can uh, you you have to like you're constrained to this sort of like pose for stuff you you can have, still have a little bit more fun with it even try bringing one of the back legs out to sort of offset the balance a little bit yeah I know it's that that hoof is sort of lifted ever so slightly but it's a little bit subtle um, yeah it's like stri- stretching and... the pose out can. Because then you've got like one going this way and one leg going this way, uh, can create quite diagonal nice sort of like balance. Yeah, uh, not, this, not even just front... like the physical balance, but I mean like balance of composition in the art piece as well. Mm. Front but front left hoof like is like a little bit out and strange. Back right hoof is out and a little bit strange. It's fun. Uh, look at look at those diagonals when you want to make some like fun, interesting poses. Yeah. Also, I just love it when legs do this. Like, I don't know what it is about this curve. It's like my favorite <laughs> thing when legs have that curve. <laughs> I love it. I'll add that curve in your honor. <gasps> it's just Brilliant. so, like, attractive. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I've never drawn anything like that before. The way that I do legs. I should try like, it. It's... I, I Sometimes I get it in my art and sometimes I don't. But like, you I've been trying to do like, what I have been trying to do is sort of like subtle, like sort of muscles. So, like, especially in standings, mm. they'll have like a slight curve there. But I was some... trying to do on that last OC I designed, which I, I remember I someone in the chat was saying, like, oh, I love that little bit of the leg. Might be new <laughs> one. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, this is, you've already got some lovely like in this picture. <laughs> You real? This is this is very sweet. This is very sweet horse. I love the colors. I love the like cloudy patterns on the fur. The cut the colors are so good, and also I I love mm. that sort of like you've gone for like very sort of like dark tones. The further away from the face you get, and then like the mm. the head is like highlighted by by the lighter part of the mane. It's like usually. Doing this part, I would have it fade to darker on the side of the head, especially, especially like here. It would, this mm-hmm. this area would be like heavily sort of like shaded in my stuff. Why did I make them all separate strokes? This no, no, not quite. <laughs> um, but if we make a new layer, drag it up here. I think we can do this in Mackie. Uh, mm. Yes, uh, yes, we can. I can go to my paint bucket tool. And I can fill everything white. And we can see the oh. lovely the lovely tones you got. It's nice yeah. that everything sort of like fades away the further away from the face it gets. It's quite nice. This is always like a good this is this is this to me I'm like more obsessed with doing than using layers. Like I <laughs> I have adopted the like checking the values for colours like so hard that I just can't not do it now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm same. It's it's just so useful. Yeah. I need to do that more. I have a bad habit of not. This is the fade layer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 definitely worth doing because it has really helped me to uh, define uh, how colors should be separated and value. Cool, like cool segments of like different colors on the thing. Mm-hmm. They they tell the Wait. form really nicely. All the different like tones of blue are just so satisfying. Yeah. You know what would be like super good? Like if if they had like an accessory. Um, <gasps> I need to, oh, like no, I'm on the wrong layer. That's why. If they had a, if they had a little accessory, nope. What can I draw? Nope. Did I just? Uh, You're <laughs> messing with too many layers. Si. It, it, <laughs> it's because it won't let me switch. It won't let me switch when I'm on uh, my tablet for some reason. Uh, so if they had like a little necklace and it was just like green, maybe not quite that bright, but 
that would like really offset the blue. I I just really love that like color scheme of like blue green with like people. a dash of green and white in it. Okay, mm. okay. What That's if what if though, going back to the Kirin scales you take the gold from the hoofs and like... <gasps> oh, that's a good idea. Get like a little pop. Very good idea, Allie. And that way you don't have to do the full Kieran horn, but you get a little more Kieran in the face, but also you get that pop that connects like the hoofs, the cutie mark, white. and the face. And yeah. a bit of green. <gasps> Maybe not with the orange. It... These like, are just like ideas. Take yeah, we'll green something, because you have a really yeah. creative and fun <laughs> OC. So it's, yeah, purple works. So it's 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 just f inspiring creativity. <laughs> but yeah, blue yep. and orange. It's like since I was a kid, I've loved that like color scheme, and I would like abuse it with everything. Uh, but except it would be like, like really like obnoxiously like. I can't even do it right. But like super bright blue and like super bright orange. <laughs> I, I just think, do I that for should... everything. <laughs> I think, I think we should probably move on before we go. Okay. <laughs> we, we love you, OC. It's a very cute, creative it's very character. very fun. Uh, we'd love to see your your submissions in the future. Uh, yeah, you, you, can, you, you can see my fixed cutie mark here. I expect it to be the... the... Wait, hold on. <laughs> They're extremely Might good at head massages. Okay. Oh, yes. The, <laughs> the head scratcher down here. <laughs> they give you a pet you can never forget. <laughs> That rhymes. Are you becoming a rapper? All right, let's go. <laughs> twiggles to the twiggles. Goodness gracious. Okay. Uh these same? No, different. Just okay. twiggles. Okay, twiggles. <laughs> Look at this. This is a fun bit. <laughs> I, I like know what this little friend up in the top left is doing. All right, I'm gonna butcher this name, and I apologize in advance. But this is by uh, Dory X. Oh, it's just Dora Explorer. Wow, my brain didn't like <laughs> parcel that. But uh, they came back to the MLP, fan MLP fandom, and this is what they made. <laughs> Heck yeah. Looks good. It's cute. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, by the way. This, um, this little furry down here is, is like really giving me like warrior cat map animator vibes. Uh, I, this little I, person right here is giving me me vibes. It's very much a <laughs> I've known a lot of it's, like it's, it's giving me like animators, so the, the, the variation of styles of so like oh pointy ears uh, and yeah, up, cat up, up here is giving me a lot of vex vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I love yeah, the I little tiny. It's very cute. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I have too much to sort of say on this. It's like you know, good good stuff. I, you could probably have this be like a little bit more uh, curved so that it like you know flows into the, sort of the rest of the head. Mm -hmm. We're doing, we're doing a, a full a full scale picture maybe. That'd mm. be good a good challenge. And probably like about here you'd have the uh neck start to come in, kind of a yeah. thing. In like that shadowy, shaded y sort of like tone kind of thing. Yeah, I'd be curious to but, see what your sketches are like, because like this is nice line art and stuff. But like, if you do any sketching, where like, you know, you draw out the twiggle face and give her a little twiggle hair, and because if you if you're not sketching, I do highly recommend it. It's a great way to kind of build things up without committing and being overly clean, and that way you really get to find how the piece comes together, and it can be really helpful just to get that that final structure, get a little more flowy. Feeling free, free flowing, actiony, liney, a little more fluid picture going on. Yeah. I don't really have too much to say about it. I think it's cute. It's very cute. Yeah. Like to see see more stuff from you. Yep. You can see my little rendition down here as well. Yeah, I'm just moving the camera. There we go. <laughs> they have the little flicky eyelashes. I love it. I love I love two things about Twilight, and that's the main kind of shape. So fun, yeah. and these these little things. Cool. <laughs> I, I I always add them because uh, my I tried to. friend Pixel Prism did them a lot, and I'm like, oh my god, I love them. 
<laughs> every, every time I draw Twilight, it includes this. Oh, yeah. uh, are we ready to move on? I think yeah. we are. Good stuff. Good Welcome back. Hope to see more art and uh, ask questions next time. We love it when people ask questions. That way we can help them better. Yeah. Good uh, Good picture. Dora, D, D, X, X, you know, whatever, whatever Ali said. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too difficult to remember. It's just too difficult. All yeah. right. Next we have Popcorn 2022. 20, it's still 202. marshmallow down here. Little little marshmallow horse, they little said. Milk, I still no. have a cutie mark for Rose, but I drew her again and would still like critique. Mm -hmm. All right. I need to see how big our uh, viewport is so where I can draw. Ba -ba -ba I can, I'll, I'll yeah. zoom out a little bit. I don't think we're losing much detail. So. <laughs> okay. You can... You can... Go up to your little red twice sketch. That's sort of oh, in the okay. corner. That's a nice. sort of framing reference. So I'm just going to do some like stuff on top of this, and I know, you know, I'm I'm going to be like, oh yeah, this is some rough stuff, but you 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 might look at this and be like, oh no, this is like crazy. But it's like it's just because I've drawn a lot. It's just because I've spent way too many. Hours inside drawing. Pixie has that good horse knowledge. Okay, first of all, lies, but thank you. No, it's true. It's true. Fight me. Um, okay. So, as for critique, <laughs> okay. I, I, I would <laughs> have to say... <laughs> I would have to say, my first question would be, and I wish, I sadly wish you were here to ask, um, do you use any references when drawing? Or have you, um, maybe have a tutorial, or just kind of something you can look at while you draw? Um, if not, I highly recommend getting some, especially when you're learning how to draw horses or just any kind of creature. Your brain only has so much knowledge in it. Um, having a reference there helps kind of feed in that knowledge that's missing. Um, we, we might know what a horse is in our head, but we do not know every yes. detail of what the horse is. So that's why having a reference is really, really, really helpful. And it's not cheating. It's not anything bad. It's really good for you. And you're going to learn so much faster the more references you use because you're collecting that knowledge gradually with every reference you kind of like absorb passively. Mm. And my question was whether or not you use undersketching. So that's another another aspect of drawing is to is to use... Uh, anything from the sort of circles and lines that I've done to even something as basic as like a it's just like a squiggly line you're using as a sort of general understanding of the pose to uh, a highly detailed skeletal anatomy. Uh, I mean, you can do different stages. You can start off how I didn't go rough and then build a more detailed anatomy afterwards. But doing under sketching is hugely, hugely important to build up the art. Like you don't put your pen down and just make an art unless you're absolutely crazy and have drawn... Uh, the thing that you're doing like 5,000 times and have it just ingrained into your muscle memory, uh, you typically are going to need to do under sketching. Um, so, and it's not anything to be ashamed of, it's just a natural part of the art process. If uh, What I've uh, been doing is just showing sort of my process of drawing a head uh, so it can hopefully uh, give you an idea of, uh, of what to do with uh, sort of the process and how to approach putting your idea down because it all starts with like the conceptualization right like i'm trying to draw a character doing this and so you just you know start with the pose okay they're sort of like in flight so the we have done the sort of like legs over here you know that's showing sort of the pose a little bit not quite as nicely as you did i uh spaced the legs out a bit too much but you get the sort of idea of it um and then it goes into sort of building up the character like this and it helps to just sort of define everything as it gives you mm. a good idea of where you're going. Also, can I just say, I, I just now, like, I was distracted midway through speaking because I was I was just realizing uh, the, the the picture. Um, uh, uh, actually, I, I can't turn off everyone's red lining, but uh, I thought that this blue, this purple thing here was the head <laughs> with, like, oh. a narwhal horn and, like, a, like, an ear or a bit of a wing or something over there. And a bit more of the feathers of the wing over there. I thought that this whole purple thing was the head. <laughs> I just oh, no. realized it was the hair, and this is the face poking out. So I got distracted halfway oh. through seeing, halfway through speaking, because I just, I just like realized. 
Oh, anyway, good. I hope my little sketching is sort of helping you to understand. Yeah. So I've I've done some like red red liney stuff on top, and I I could go through you know all the different pieces and all all the different parts and all that sort of stuff. But to be honest, your your job at the moment is to keep having fun while drawing. It's yeah. to you know, it's 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 to find out what really what what you like about drawing. Is it you know just drawing cute ponies? Is it drawing like action shots? Is it drawing whatever? And then just to keep on doing that because you know the the, the 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 yeah like like we can give you all sorts of advice and tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff, but it's not gonna it's not gonna matter unless you just keep on drawing you know keep keep on yeah, doing this stuff this stuff never good. be never feel daunted to like like look at a picture of a pony either like from the show or that an artist has drawn. And and think, oh no, I don't know how to do that. It's scary. Like it's way too far above what I can do right now. Like because that would be a thing that that's an, that's something that artists of every level face. There there will always be an artist that inspires you, and and part of that will be looking at the art and trying to go down the road of inspiration instead of down the road of like, oh god, what am I even doing? I could never make anything like that. It's something that everyone faces, um, but it's important to be able to just say, okay, well, look, if I want to draw this thing, even if it's something very simple, there's no shame in feeling like you're, like the thing to work up to is something that looks simple to you, because chances are it's probably not as basic as it might look to the common eye. Um, it's just a case of looking at it, breaking it down, saying, okay, let's focus on one part at a time, like maybe just the leg, and just try drawing the pony leg as we see in the show, from like just standing and then from different angles look at sort of uh, breakdowns of the different pieces of the skeleton and how they bend so you get like references of ponies with the legs in different positions and uh and, and just try drawing a bunch of different poses and get like the shape down and, and experiment with different ideas for the shape and you could you can just do a little bit and you don't have to go all the way until you have amazing super well shaped pony legs you can just do a little bit until you get a, a you until you feel comfortable and then move on to the nose and focus on how different people draw the nose and how it shapes the face each little part is something to learn and each little part is something you can focus on one at a time so you don't need to feel like you need to learn the entire thing all at once uh, and end up being overwhelmed you can just take it one step at a time and it's good you will get there mm. eventually if 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 you want if you want actual like personalized advice uh, ask questions in in your yes. post and be like, "Hey, this this is what I want to do with art. This is what I want help with." Or come into the Discord and then chuck us stuff and do the same thing there. Where we're available all week. Mm -hmm. Good, good drawing. You yeah, did good. and good luck on finding that cutie mark for your character. It's always yeah, good choice. <laughs> it's it's you'll get there. Eventually. I think I think I think my my like initial sketch for the for my my pony's cutie mark was like a. <laughs> I mean, and, spirit, and, and that was it. Spirits literally was just the yin yang symbol because I was using the pony creator and he was the first character I made. And I was like, oh, like, what symbol can I use for the cutie mark PNG? Like, something that means something to me. Oh, of course, I have like the yin yang posted all over my room and I wear a necklace every single day. Uh, of course, that. So his, he just literally had to, a stock. PNG <laughs> yin yang symbol as his kitty mark for years until I redesigned it. Um, oh. and that's another thing. I like, don't be afraid to redesign. You can redesign your character anytime you want. So just mm -hmm. play it, play with it. And I've, I've, I've redesigned my kitty mark like sixteen times. Yeah. That's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's it's good. Consistency. You can, you can just take the idea and be like, how else can I interpret this? Yeah, can consistency is for people who are who are afraid more to skilled than me. <laughs> See, yep. see, this is why I made my cutie mark just paint splotches, and I'm like, as long as you have the color, they can be any kind of splotch. <laughs> Who needs that? Oh, God, I've, I, or, I have had. So, as, I'm as, so as... used to having like, or the uh, maybe not the actual experience, but the fear of having commissioners that are like, um, no, sorry, this, uh, this thing here goes like slightly higher. This like scar on the side of their torso needs to go slightly <laughs> longer. You know, just really specific things like that. Uh, and I had like, uh, as there's this one like repeat customer i have and uh who's a good friend lovely person but they uh they commissioned me a couple times now to draw their character and their character does have like a bunch of scars i just found out recently uh that a uh, they have like a newer design with better colors because it used to be like white coat with white and black or dark gray mane 
Uh, so it was like the main cover was basically the same, like full white as the body, and they had sort of like dark grey stripes. But recently, they they actually had like a, a more even toned grey character. I'm like, I could have been drawing them the whole time. <laughs> and and secondly, that they really don't care. Apart from like this one scar on the chest, they don't care where the others go. And I'm like, I have been very specifically like placing them exactly where they are supposed to be. <laughs> and like, I think someone else in the chat as well was also like, what? You know, put all this effort into the positioning for nothing. <laughs> yeah. I love but it. It, it, it helps to have that up front, I think, so people can just be creative, but they're not worrying about like where every stripe in your sparkle dog needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's we're gonna move, move on, on to the next picture. Like a typewriter, we're going over to the left down our line. Yep. Wait, have we, no, we haven't missed one. Okay, cool. Yeah, all the papers. <gasps> oh, this stuff. one is, is less fanciful and and whimsical this one seems a bit more heavy what do we have here Ellie? this is by fox of the stars uh a future event in a story of mine no questions um and that's it so my first critique is questions please please give us questions what exactly did you want critique on is there something yes. you were struggling with something you were trying to portray but couldn't portray or Something you did but don't feel confident about. Any yeah. any any kind of questions, any kind of direction for your art, always happy to hear. Yeah, it helps so mm. much for you, even without realizing it, just to think of like, okay, what part do I actually want them to look at and help with? Because then it gets you to just sort of break down what parts you're actually okay with and what parts you maybe you think can change, but maybe you have an idea of how to change it. Uh, and other parts that you just don't know. Like, oh, this is bothering me, but I don't know why. Or like, I... I I know exactly what's wrong with this, but I just can't fix it. it it's totally helpful to to ask those things. So, so let me let me go through like compositiony sort of stuff at the moment. So, I'm focusing on this pony, a little bit of this wall, a little bit of these papers. There's a lot of stuff, like all of the papers sort of around here, and all of the text around here, that kind of just fades together and isn't really it, it doesn't really add much to sort of the message of of your picture so what you can do is you can make those parts are less important so that the parts you care about will stand out and an easy way to do that is i've got just got like a big low opacity dark brush and i'm just gonna you know fade everything out a little bit you know hey Pretend that there, we can pretend there's like some kind of like a light shining on the middle area or something like that, and then as it yeah, goes out, you have it's like this light. Vignetted. You have this light on the hair, so having like almost a spotlight, like Pixie's creating, would work out for the lighting you have on the pony. Hmm. Sometimes and, also less is more. You can what I'm doing here is just showing like a scattering of papers that are sort of like just like laid around. This one's ripped a little bit. Just just create sort of like little effects. Some are crumpled up, so there's some variety going on, and just it, you, maybe you don't need to cover the entire floor because this is still a lot of paper. Um, mm. they, they don't have to be under her. I just sort of place most of them around because it sort of creates a nest for the eye to see where the character is placed, and it creates a nice little framing device. But they can be placed everywhere. Um, but you can add more than I've done here. But just creating a scattering around can be helpful. The other thing is remember that we that we should be seeing a three dimensional seen here so really the papers in the front uh if i actually use a different color um the papers in the front here if we're following these sort of guidelines uh this is a terribly drawn square but bear with me <laughs> actually a bit smaller it'd be a bit smaller than a piece of paper that's here in the foreground with the pony sort of in the middle of this is there's there's a sort of three dimensional direction going on. So like trying to show these effects can be very helpful. And and balancing that so like okay if I if we've got like a crumpled up piece of paper way over here in the foreground, maybe even lower than that, uh, sort of like over here, so we can see it it's sort of in the foreground, but it's it's blurred out. It's in the dark area that Pixie has outlined, so it's not really a focus. But then there's, like, there's a little one over here, and that helps to draw the eye. Um, very nicely. Like I, I was using this in a recent picture with a character being transformed into a Lamia in sort of like an abandoned temple. There was sort of like a pavement flooring with cracks 
uh, in it and like little bits of plants growing through and sort of rocks and boulders and fallen pillars everywhere. And so I was, I was very heavily trying to use like a rock in the foreground and then a rock in the background, you know, and a rock like in the midground sort of showing that, that uh, you know, the transition of perspective because otherwise it looked like the floor was just two, two feet thick. You know, it was it was really hard to determine that the character was sitting in a 3D space until I put those rocks there. So it could be super helpful to help define that and help the viewer to see where the where the the horizon is and where the character is from it. The good the good thing about the crumpled papers is you can you can just do whatever you can you can actually yeah. do like okay, let's let's do like a little hand shape. Let's do like a little a little clump of clouds or whatever. Like, you know, it's, it's fine. Yes. All right, you, you don't need to worry about this, like, you know, getting everything Especially looking up here. right. Yeah. It's That's like cool. Pixie said, like, we've got, like, a high detail area here, and then mm -hmm. we've got, like, a kind of lower ring where you don't need to have and... as much detail, and then, and then a, a much sort of less detail ring out in the, out in the further distance where... Where everything can be really sort of low quality and blurry because it doesn't matter. It's it's further away from the eyes. So let me let me let me look at this like particular the the high detail kind of an area. This is the area that you want people to sort of focus on because this is this. where this this is where all of the a lot of the message and all that kind of stuff is. So and another good thing about like doing like stuff like this is that let me just like add the the floor color in between there that looks more contrasty and more interesting than just uh, a sea of sort of white papers because you know you've got more different sorts of uh, contrasting shapes and sort of colors and stuff in there and we can make some of these like floorboards other slightly different colors and all that sort of stuff and then on the wall because it's also part of this like high contrast high important area you can do the similar kind of like a thing and have like specifically areas of the wall that don't have text in them just to sort of make it more contrasty and more interesting because then that will like pull focus towards yeah. the parts with text on them you know? yeah. Again, basically, it's less is more. Like you trying to create like a texture. Say you wanted bits of, you wanted your character to look furry. Uh, you wanted to detail on the coat. You don't want the entire outline to be squiggles because that can just be a huge mess. You just have like little tufts of fur every now and then. So the same thing applies to what we've been talking about with the papers and the wall, the words on the wall at the back. Like having just it scattering about. Same with like if I was to draw a brick wall, I am not going to sit there and draw every damn brick and like the texture on all of them and the gaps between them and little details to differentiate them. That would be a nightmare. I'm just going to do like a little scattering of lines or use a, a, a wall texture, but that's besides the point. <laughs> just have a little I'm, scattering I'm gonna... of things can help a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to draw everyone because I'm a good artist. Thank you very much. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Nah. fight fight ding, fight fight nah, fight like yeah Round two. It's, it's just yeah it's 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 just pulling pulling the viewer's focus towards the important bits yeah and then working out ways to sort of make their folk to like i think that was a good framing make them actually. not really look at the areas that are less important pretty much yeah, this is actually a very good framing of what you want to focus on with like not the full circle but just showing a bit of the character and then uh, the wall, like where where the character is looking, having her sort of placed this way. I mean, no, I'm not saying to actually crop the image this way, but having her placed a little bit further down rather than in the direct center. If we're going by, just because we want to see how, how incredibly much we can scribble over this picture. If we're going by the wall <laughs> of thirds, uh, it's good to, it's not bad to have your character in the middle, but placing them further down towards the lower third rather than in the middle uh, can help because it just helps create sort of like a nicer framing device. But yeah, uh, we talked a lot about composition. I hope that wasn't too overwhelming for you. Uh, we've kind of scribbled over it, the entire thing. Um, so <laughs> hopefully some of what we said makes some sense. 
And uh, maybe not for this one, because it was like, you know, a finished picture. We re we respect that. We're not expecting you to go in and just change the entire thing and redraw half of it. Uh, but for future reference, if you're doing a similar scene, you can learn from it. Uh, you can take some of our advice, try it out, and hopefully you can draw something really, really cool and dynamic looking. And then you can go back to this one and look at it and say, like, wow, I've improved so much. I've made everything look so much less, like, static. Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can dive into other things, but... <laughs> it's probably good to look at yeah. another picture. The only only last like small thing that I like for more like immediate actionable advice was I I changed the overlapping of the uh, the body a little bit because you had the thighs going like sort of behind the butt, uh, whereas I I sort of feel like it should be a little bit more overlapped this way and not too much but just a little bit. I I also added the tail in. Ah, yes. Yeah, I wasn't sure about the tail. If if they it's don't have a tail, tough. though, um, put a little nub. Like the the tail has like a actual fleshy bone part that sticks out. It's not just hair. So even if a pony yeah. doesn't have like a hairy tail, they'll still have like a a nub tail. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, and um. Oh, sorry. For the the one thing I did, um, I went beside the tail. I did change the hair a bit. The hair from the back. The thing you have to remember about hair is like, sure, in simplification form, you can just draw the big oval. Well, let me get it better. You can just draw that big oval shape, and that can work, but it just adds a little more life to the drawing and makes it less flat to really show, like, where the hair separates and comes out. Usually, yeah. you know, hair comes out of the head, so if there's stuff towards the front of the head, it'll, mm -hmm. you know, come out from a point and go towards the front, and the hair yes, that falls exactly. back will go back to mm. the back. Just like I think, nice I think it was like one of the first things about like when I I've, I mean I've been like sort of drawing and designing characters since I was a tiny little kid but when I first decided I'm going to learn to draw and I started learning to draw both anime and furry stuff the first thing one of the, one of the very earliest things I learned was with hair to do with like the direction of the flow and like how like how you've got to have it like flowing in a direction and like pick a point and make it go out from there because it it really yeah. does help it's an important thing to focus on. Anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, hope you submit more stuff. Hope you have good luck in the future developing. Yes. Sorry if today was overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> really good stuff. Piece. We just had a lot to lot to talk about. It's a very interesting subject. Yes, very it's, good picture. It's yes. not because it's not because your picture was was in any way bad. It's just because no, no. your. I think it's because your picture has a lot of potential and your art has a lot of potential that gave us a lot to talk about. So. Yeah. And we're we're missing the person that usually keeps us on task. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're, we're very we're very rambling today well then but, is that in mind let's move on to the luna yeah luna. don't worry we're also luna. we also didn't have the friend who would keep us very much off track task for ages <laughs> or either of them because cpc is kind of like that too i was thinking of maths but <laughs> true cpc is also very distractible Alrighty, so, so this Luna is by SS50661, and it just says Forest Luna by me. Uh, I believe no questions. We'd like to know Heck what yeah. you uh, would like us to focus on. Questions are helpful because it helps us to, to know what sort of advice would help you the most. It helps you to think about what sort of areas of the picture you need to focus on the most. Uh, it might even help you to realize what exactly it is that's bothering you. So it, it's... It's very good to think about what it is that you want to ask us. All all of this is rendered in very lovely ways. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Love it. It's, especially this like the extreme foreground stuff is is something that like a lot of people struggle with, but you've done it really nicely. Good job. Mm -hmm. something struck about for a second. Suck the baby. So I think the first thing that sticks out to me is. You have this lovely, lovely god rays pouring through, and yet the the lighting on Luna herself doesn't quite feel like it mimics the direction of those god rays. Like, I almost expect for most of the um, bright lights to be hitting her from behind, and we get these really nice, like, outlines on her body, these really nice, um, what are they called? When the light hits the line. Like, there's a word for that, right? Uh, uh, the, I don't remember. It's, it's, it's on its highlights. Rim, rim lighting. Rim lighting. Rim, rim lighting. lighting thank yep. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rim lighting. Um, exactly the word I was looking for. Um, people in the chat help. They're, they're blessed. Blessed are these people. Blessed are these people. <laughs> so something if, like if, that. If, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, all, all good. The, the other thing that is interesting is if I like take my cursor 
And then I go from the very dark area to the sort of mid mid tone of the hair to the very light area. It's all all like the same hue. So if, if you look at like the on, on the color wheel at like, you know, here's red, here's yellow, here's blue, all that sort of stuff, it's all like in the same hue range. Whereas what you can do is you can take the middle one, the middle general tone of the hair, and then when you as you make it sort of darker, you change it more toward you actually shift it around the color wheel more towards blue to sort of reinforce that it's like a shadow sort of tone. And then similar thing, when you go lighter, you can shift it more towards that sort of greenish range. And then it's it's a very subtle change between the top colors, the original colors, and the hue shifted colors. But it basically just reinforces the sort of uh, tones and the sort of like feelings that you're going for. Let me, let me chuck on a couple of uh, little... Yeah, I'll do that sort of thing. You know, I believe we do have a stuff. hue a hue blending mode we could use. Ah, that's yeah. that's fine. I'll track everything on top. But you, you can see with with this tone changing a little bit, it it, lo it almost looks a bit more purple now. You can oh, okay, Anything. strange. But cha changing everything a little bit more towards purple, and this is like darker highlight or oh, sorry darker low light so let me change that even more towards purple it basically just like reinforces the uh shadows versus the highlights sort of thing it's yeah if if you wanna if you wanna learn more about this this specific sort of thing look at Q shifting or come into the discord and yell at me because I have some materials about it <laughs> Dappled on a very gentle effect there, but it really is quite nice. So I went towards a more turquoise at the background and more yellowy at the foreground. Mm. You can I've, I've so you can foreshorten the sort of eyes a little bit more, and then do like a similar kind of thing with this uh, <clears throat> with this this moon symbol on the front, because if you trace the sort of contour lines around like very distorted right here because it's like everything's going around so the stuff in this area is what you'll see like front on and in this area it'll be a lot more like you know something kind of roughly sort of like that so you can just distort it a bit more all that stuff and mm -hmm. it'll probably feel wrong but it'll make it look a bit more accurate mm -hmm. You're like, all oh, your rendering is good. Yeah, I would just push it. Uh, like we were talking about earlier, how the the light feels more like it's coming from from behind. I would just push it. I'm just doing a very like gentle, almost purple shadow towards the front of the body to help pop that backlight just a bit. Hmm. And then you can get a little bit of that yellow glow from the god rays worked into the color of the fur as well just very gently she'll almost glow with the god rays and it'll be lovely like that mm. and i'm just doing the same sort of hue shifting with the lights and shadows on the ear and all that it's a good good technique This piece really is gorgeous, though. You, you definitely know uh, a lot of stuff. We're just being very nitpicky. Mm. Very nitpicky around light and shadow and stuff, because... Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you can oh. see the, like, little tiny, tiny changes in terms of, you know muzzle shape and this and that sort of stuff it's it's just 
you know, some refinement kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. Unless anyone else has any other points? No, I think uh, next time, please ask questions. That way we can better help you. We only kind of just mm -hmm. touched on this because we didn't want to push you in any sort of extreme direction. But yeah, mm. good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. Crystal this time. Chrysalis. We have a Chrissy. <clears throat> Matt, they know how to build a back Chrysalis. It'd be so cute. <laughs> this this looks like it's a it's a ponification of like an album cover. Ah. Or it's a brand new album cover. Hmm, it does, it does. So I, I I know that two minutes to midnight is both a term uh when it comes to nuclear Armageddon and also an album. And given hmm. the square. I didn't know that question. Sure I, I, I I'm guessing the nuclear Armageddon just because of the explosion in the background. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was like the sort of like hive or something. <laughs> Possible. Well, this is by MLP Hero. Uh, it's titled Two Minutes to Midnight. Uh, and that's it. No questions. Okay. Thank you for submitting. And uh, as we've been in, in some of our streams, we are sort of all on the telling people to critique bandwagon. It feels like the stream we're on the uh, please ask questions bandwagon. Yes, please. We'd like and to it communicate. Helps us a lot. And it helps you. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Yep. Uh, I tend I tend to have this this like top line of the muzzle sort of between the eyes, sort of at, mm -hmm. at the base of the eyes. So just yeah, me too. A little bit. Because I think I think there's like a like a corner of the. Nothing's going to let me draw today. I oh, know corner of, of like between the bridge of the nose and the eye that's how i see it yeah you essentially you don't want the tip of the nose drawn you want the bridge of the nose drawn because you can just mm. have the nostrils there to depict where the tip is it's more important that you get that bridge in, in 3d yeah so another really uh interesting little tip is the cheeks just, you know, you can just bulge them out. Bul bulge out the cheeks a bit. Boom. And the, the neck doesn't need to directly follow on from there. You can have it, like, do something like this, where it's like, you know, the neck is a bit a bit shorter than the whole width of the face. And it's just, it's just a tiny bit offset, but it definitely makes a bit of a difference. Yeah, I, I definitely think that'd be a, ni a nice improvement. Oh, what do we have appearing on the, the side here? Lovely little driver. Is that Ali? What? Is that you in the bottom? Is that Pixie? Yes. This one is me, the purple. Aha, I thought so. It's the angry, angry little. It's now uh, by demon. I think something nice you could do um, for this background explosion is if I don't know what program you're using, but if you have some sort of blur tool, just to really sell that distance um, between the character and the explosion, it, it'll it'll like that it'll bring the focus to the character, but still have the explosion going on, so you can get a nice little. I feel like I said the same thing like three times, but yeah, Blur blurring out background because stuff in the distance tends to get blurred a little. Mm. <laughs> I try to make sp spirit green because he's inside her magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being silly over here. Don't mind me. Oh, good. Silly is good. But yeah, in in general. Good, uh, good picture. Yeah, front like fr front facing stuff is always going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be good to see stuff from you in the future. I think you did a good job. Yeah, yeah. And if I might Actually, recommend, you should totally check right. out our sidebar. There's a lot of really, really great tutorials to check out. Lots of good information there. Highly recommend checking yes. out. 
such as the how to give critique our, uh... video. <laughs> oh my god. Maze brings up a good point, which is to like just just add like you can add like little houses or villages or whatever to sort of sort of sort of show the scale and all that kind of sort of stuff for whatever all that kind of thing. And then you can have the base of this explosion sort of thing come in to the horizon sort of thing. Yeah. Good picture. I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Hope we see you again. Remember to critique yeah. other people and ask questions next time. Yeah. yeah. All right, next, next pony. One we were looking at earlier. Yes, this is Sorry. by Soy Sprout. Yes, um, it says base use. I'm trying to experiment with effects, and Piper is our lovely subject. Good stuff. We were, so, uh, we were sort of talking about this one a bit earlier. Um, it would be helpful. It's, it's 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 good to share the base that you're using. Yes, because it'd be very helpful then, to share then we know. We can look then, at the base, we'll know, and, like, and we can, and also just for the sake of supporting the person who made the base as well, it's always good to link to it. Like, it, it, especially in like the context of like a critique mm -hmm. sort of learning thing, it's good for us to like know what is which which parts are like elements of the base versus elements of the stuff you change from. Yeah, because we were sitting trying to figure out like what which parts do we think they actually drew, and we were searching Google trying to find uh, pony bases that might be the one he used, but we couldn't really find anything close enough. Um, so we weren't really I'd... sure. Yeah, but all good, no no stress. Mm -hmm. Just something to keep in mind for next time. Yeah. Something and something. Questions. Yeah. All of the colors on this are absolutely lovely. I love them. I, I love the two different like brown tones on the wing. Yeah. What I might do, what I might suggest, is just lightening this uh, back part up a bit, just to create a little bit of like, ooh, uh, yeah, some something, a little bit of like difference from, you know, the front part. The only thing that I really had was if you look at the eyebrows, which I'm going to outline them here, so they're super. Vibrant. Mm. You can easily see one of them is like really, really small. So even with foreshortening, it's a bit of an extreme difference. I would just balance them a little bit. Maybe make this one like slightly more sort of managed, and then make this one a little bit uh, not not too much uh, longer, but taller. So just to, to help honest. balance out the eyebrows a little bit. Yeah. To to be honest, what what I'd probably do is. You see this one, it's sort of in line. This mm -hmm. one, I think I think this one comes like out a little bit too far. So I'd I'd probably like even just sort that a little bit more and just be like, yeah, something like that. Ish kind of a thing. That's that's the vibe I'm getting from the angle and form and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, everyone has sort of different ways of sort of building the <laughs> There's there's a reason why when when we all decide to like redline a picture, you get like six different like Pieces of advice, <laughs> ways to draw things. We all have different ways of sort of building the anatomy, but yeah, the, the, I mean, obviously the the head shape is likely part of the base, but the eyebrows, I feel like, were you could uh, just, uh, make the other one a little bit closer to the one we have in the foreground, so they feel a little bit I, more I, balanced. I tend to like um, at the the sort of where the front hooves connect to the body like flaring it out a little bit just to be like yeah this is actually like part of the body and you can have like you know the muscle and the badly drawn muscle that is drawn with the zero <laughs> knowledge of anatomy but yeah some something like that can sometimes be nice yeah also oh, I, I really do. love Obviously, the, uh... this is to do with my sort of style drawing fluff I, I really like yours though because yeah. sort of the legs so I have the I have the fluff come out like this and it sort of like goes back into the body and I have like a few stray like bits here, and I have a side bit come out like this, and it sort of arcs around into the fluff that leads into like the shoulder, like that. And I'll do the same with sort of the back here. But that's uh, that's how I do it. Obviously, you can you can try and interpret that in your own style if you want to as an experiment or do it your way. 
I really like the little hoofy fluffs. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but it's just one that does like the little feathering in the hoofs. Yeah. Hmm. That looks something. <laughs> one one of the one of the people in the chat brought up a thing, which is this outline color in particular. So what what I would do for there. It, so you, you've got this sort of you want to keep this dark outline around the um, the outside of the picture to keep it readable and stuff. But inside the picture, you basically want the outline color to be whatever is in front. So what I'd probably do, grab this sort of color from here, and then just continue that up. Yeah, because it's very important to do that. The 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 pony in in these particular parts, the pony is in front and the hair's behind, and so it's you know just just reinforcing like what. Parts were in front and which behind because mm -hmm. it's it it just it's a small thing but it it makes it like a lot more readable. Yeah. If you didn't, um, I do definitely recommend having all of the different uh, outline and color parts in separate layers. I have like everything separated onto different layers, so what that means is for the outline, uh, if I wanted to go in and do something like Pixie was just doing, it's super easy because I can just say, okay, lock the body outline and just go in and just to lock the transparency, not the whole thing, and just go in and just colour the entire thing. But then you can go in, what will happen is, um, where there are parts that overlap, um, so say you've got the main outline on top of the, the body, and then you just colour the entire main outline to be this sort of dark brown. What you'll find happen is, it will zoom in and it'll look like this. And so then it's just a case of going in and sort of just raising the main outline so it doesn't overlap the ear. Um, because uh, you will have like little overlaps like that when you're colouring the outline. But it's just a case of going in and finding the parts that don't go in front and just making sure they clip properly. Uh, it only takes a few yeah. minutes. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I, I, I tend to have all of my line art on one layer, so everything's a mess. That that just sounds painful to me. <laughs> it's, like it's, 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 yeah. I know some not, people don't you're like not, you're the, not wrong. I know some people don't like having to take all the time for the organizing and naming of layers, but like it just it, it creates so much less work yeah. in in the long run for me. It it it, it just doesn't work with the way I draw. It's it's just I, all all the all the line art on one thing smush, and then I just have like a separate <laughs> clip, clipped layer on top that is like line art colors, and I huh. do manually. So sometimes I'll do the nice. line art colors as a clipping layer, and or just like one or two layers, but. Yeah, um, I have like I have the like everything like the body, the face, the main clothes and accessories and stuff all on separate layers, uh, and mm -hmm. I'll have pretty much every different color on a separate layer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like in the in the I have a folder for line art and a folder for colors, and a folder for shading, and so like the the outline and the shading will be by like the body part. But the colors will just be like everything that's like a separate color will have its own layer, so it's really easy to go in and change stuff. And I just, I just personally scared of uh, of making a change to something that I know I can't like later on, like three hundred like undo steps later, I can't go back and and change mm. it. Um, so I, I always make everything on a separate layer, just because I'm scared of of ever like committing anything. <laughs> but it, it does help, I think. Yeah, I've I've just gotten into the habit of chucking everything together. Screw it, yeah. done. <laughs> Maybe I'll separate the background. You have a much more, but yeah, you have a much more like yeah. sort of like loose and free style to your your drawing. I I I only, I, to, I sort of mm. limit that to the sketching, in my particular case. I want to do the what sketching. Will... Everything's methodical after that. Hmm. So what I what what I would do is also the color inside of this ear. What I've done is I've taken this color, the the actual like light color here, and then made it a touch darker, and then shifted it a little bit towards red, and just boom. And it's tiny, but it's like you know just a and low opacity, but it's just you know a little bit of like something different in terms of the color in there. So mm -hmm. also all of all of these like areas of like the splotchy, splattery sort of sort of stuff cookies and cream almost like colors it looks yeah good. i love it i know i was looking mm. at those i really like those i mean really like a, accomplished i'm eating like a crunchy cookie style chocolate at the moment so it's like pretty much on <laughs> yeah. pony reminds me of this pony very much it is so lovely if, if <laughs> you want 
more personalized advice on your thing, uh, attach more words next time and be like, hey, I like this, but I hate this. And then we'll yeah. be like, okay, well, we'll go. This is the part I think I'm struggling with. How do I fix? Yeah. I just know she's like Let's saying move something. On. There's like a little speech yeah. bubble coming out of her, f- her mouth in the background, but it's like it's doodled in the background. It's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the Adorable. little details around her. Our final piece for the evening. Nope. Oh, how dramatic. And it's actually a landscape picture. I can utilize the space. Mm. <laughs> Yay. All right. So this is by Famous Witchbone 7098. Um, a gift I made for JYC Row Molten Ponies. Oh, uh, no comments. Love it. I, I never heard, know how to. I always said Jake Row, but like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I just said Jake. Chick- uh, uh, the Chick- I, I, I think I think Ali. Peace. The part of like Ali's brain that like pronounces things is a bit on the fritz today. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just dyslexic. That's all. It, it, it is. It, it, it is fritz. usually it's a permanent fritz. <laughs> it is usually capitalized, isn't it? So it might be an acronym. And Ali might not be wrong. <laughs> I just didn't want to risk it, so I yeah. spelled it. <laughs> they make some, they I, make some I'm, good I'm tunes, though. Person. Is the the main issue? <laughs> the main focus point. I love and it. This is some good Sorry. parts. It, it is. The main thing is this whole area all blends together. Uh, yeah, so, what, 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 I've, what I've done is I've grabbed this sort of shadowy color. I've turned it a little tiny bit darker with a big, low opacity brush. And then I'm like, okay, let's just create a bit of a, a bit of like shadow on there. You know, just to sort of differentiate between what is the front and what is the back. Yeah, even even something like that. Very very small, but it makes it a lot more readable. And like when when your when your characters are similar kinds of like shapes and similar colors and all that sort of stuff, your main job is how do I make this readable? And it's it's you know some kind of contrast between them. Hmm. Yeah, especially especially because your like clients clean layers as well. Yeah, especially because your lines are um very consistent width across the across a lot of the piece. Yeah, which which is really cool. I I don't see a lot of people like using uh consistent width lines, and it's it's really cool because I like using them, and it's it's fun. I like them. Yeah. Mm. Also, cool, cool job with the with the orange to yellow to stuff. It looks good. Mm-hmm. I, I was looking in the chat, and Maze brings up a good point that um, I really love. Like all this blobby lava feels you have going on, you could probably fit some of that into the feathers. Like almost have them oozing a little too, and that can really bring back the like lava feel. Little little bits and bobs here and there, just to. Oh, really what stand. what you could do? Yeah, I've. If you look at like, uh, I forgot what his name is. He's one of the lead artists for like uh, Riot or something like that, or League of Legends or something. One of, one of those weird computer game things that people seem to like <laughs> is because because you've got something here which is like very fluidy and very liquidy and that sort of stuff. If you wanted to. You could sort of decide on an arc kind of a thing. It's like, okay, they're flying up in this direction and they're coming from here. And then you could have some of the, some of the like lavery stuff sort of mm. be flicking out towards that direction and just like reinforcing that sort of like arc of like, hey, here's, here's where they're coming from sort of thing. Uh. Uh, putting bits of uh, sort of glow highlights from the sort of fiery parts, uh, sort of reflecting on on different areas. So like uh, very heavily, like around, uh, like around here, on here, stuff like that, where there's going to be a lot of like sort of glow. Um, uh, areas like this, where there's you know these parts are sort of like held over. They're surrounded by a lot of this fiery light source. 
So it, I think it creates a nice effect to sort of drown them out into that light. Um, you could also add like a bit of, uh, uh, find my like, soft eraser. You, uh, you could add a little bit of sort of like inner, uh, shadow, uh, like this, if you wanted to. Uh, I do think that it's mostly, it's going to be like completely sort of like lost to it. So if you want it, if you want it to, to sort of increase that sort of like shadow that's casting, you want to have like a big soft rim light like that. But, uh, you could also do it like this where it's just sort of just drowned in it because it, it sort of creates that image of like being near a sort of like lava flow and i mean in real life you know lava flows is like black crackly rock that's turned to half liquid um but in you know like the sort of video game like aesthetic of like the bright orange glowy liquid and everything sort of fiery and hot you want to sort of increase the sort of bleed of that uh to really give those like effects so that's why i was i was doing i was creating these like um effects of the sort of the lighting creating this this highlight going on the feathers here sort of helps to <clears throat> to blend it in a little bit like yeah the rocks are sort of covering it but then there's also the light sort of splashing on the highlights and it sort of helps to create that effect of the sort of the heat spreading out and also sort of placing the highlights around parts of the body as well because even though these parts also have like little bits here which are generating light this is huge light source up here so that's going to be doing most of the light spreading and here too obviously but yeah it's just sort of thinking about how you can use that like fiery warm light and just offset it with the the cold the cold of the these sort of rocky looking uh parts and really help create that hot effect Yeah, Maze, Maze has shared some some super uh, lovely references in the Discord chat if you were to join our our Discord in the voice channel. Uh, I, let's, see I, if, let's see if I can I, flip over to flip over OBS a second. Uh, here I, we go. I was apparently, I was apparently talking, but... Uh, oh, I, no, you I were muted. muted. Yeah. But, so, or listen to everything we have to say and all this sort of stuff and then be like nah and it's fine because it's your picture who cares yeah, have fun. We, yeah we, this is just suggestions <laughs> but uh, we're, we're, we're chucking like a hundred million different things at your, your way so feel free to chuck so f feel free to listen to what you think is good and then chuck everything else in the bin for now it's fine this is a good reference this one See, the, this is this this one this last one that me shared is is I think a good reference because it uh, it has a lot like you've got lots of like lovely warm orange but this is so much sort of red uh, with the ye orange to yellow to white in the middle there because it it just has this I mean I I remember this from like Pokemon right like <laughs> you would have like the Charmander tail it's like orange yellow white because that is kind of uh, the effect of fire it creates that lovely lovely hot effect but it's offset by like very dark so if you look like over here in the back there's uh it, you, you can see almost no detail on the actual hill at least from my tablet screen anyway and then there's super bright white like fiery lava going down the side um so like that's kind of what you've got going in your picture just uh i think trying to increase that effect Although I, I personally usually, in my pictures, try to have the tones very balanced. I think in this case you want to shove that contrast in. Uh, but it's, it's maybe not for this one, because it was a very like finished picture, and I, I totally respect that you might not want to work on it anymore. But uh, if you draw these characters again, it might be worth like experimenting with, okay, how can I just really pump in that lava feel, like, like actual lava like this, molten rock that's super like white-hot effect against all this black rock that's been charred. To, to create that effect, because I think you've got a very good. Yeah. You, you're clearly on the right, uh, the right train with it. It's uh, just a case of of take the idea, reference, see what you could improve, and what other directions you can take it in if you want to, and, uh, and go ahead with that. Oh, I love all the sort of like wispy flames someone's sort of drawn on, on here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 a I'm a big fan of of never touching your piece again. Yeah. So just something for <laughs> the future. Do it for the do it for the next one. It's definitely what I would yeah. recommend as well. Yep. Um, yeah. This right. you, you can see the kind of like you know just like little bits of like lava and stuff and fire that is like 
flicking off and reinforcing the sort of like arcs that they're flying in or seem to be. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, hopefully, like, you have oh, some good luck being creative in the future. Good yeah, picture. Yeah. Chuck, us, chuck us more in future. And thank you for the comment. Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's always helpful to like have a comment when we're critiquing a picture and be like, okay, this is what they were doing it for. Yes. Um, so with that, I think that is everything. We've looked yeah, at today. that is the last of it. We made it through the Reddit. <laughs> so we did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yay. We Thank about, you everyone for coming. Yeah, we have about 100 billion pictures and we got through them. And yeah, feel free to critique <laughs> more people on the subreddit because, you know, they've been almost critiquing. two hours. <laughs> you, if, if, yeah, if, if you critique things, your art will improve because you'll you'll yes. start you'll see you'll see the sort of issues that happen in other people's art and then you'll be like looking at your own art and you'll yeah. be like oh oh I see I see. I can also look at the stuff that is happening in my yeah. my art most oh of most of the sort of like professional like college degree like A level art courses focus on like analysis like there's obviously a lot of like creation as well but like so much of it is just taking artist work breaking it down and writing 3000 word essays every day on these like uh these these uh art pieces by art that was made like 100 years ago that you don't really understand fully um but you don't have to worry about that you you get to critique pictures that you actually like a lot because they're about the stuff that you love and uh, oh i haven't moved the uh, I move my Aggie, not the canvas. Okay, uh, and you get to not have to write three thousand words, but you can certainly say something, and it helps you to understand pictures. It helps you to understand like the process of art and the composition, and you'll be getting you, this is what you do in in like a college course. So you, you'd be doing that for free. So you can think about that, and you can be stealing this experience from us because we're taking it from you. Ha ha ha! Don't you just want to stop all, us all of the it for yourself? Yeah, all 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 of the stuff that I've learned about art has been me stealing it from redlining other people and being like, oh, I'll use my <laughs> picture now. Ah. Yes. Uh -huh. That's percent that. Thousand percent. Yep. So get on the critiquing train. That's what the subreddit's for. So make sure you give someone else a chance to get some lovely critique because it will help them. It will help you. And uh, everyone have a lovely day. Yay. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Rough. <laughs> I guess I cut Rough. up Ellie's. I cut up Ellie's little thing. Oh.